Hey guys, Daniel from Roland here, and now that we've installed the driver and updated the firmware, we're gonna download and install Serato, and I'm gonna show you the basics of how to get around inside of the software. Let's take a look. So I'm gonna go to serato.com, and on this page, I'm gonna hover over products, and I'm gonna hit download. Now I'm already logged into the website, so I'm gonna click download version 2.2, which is the latest as of this video, and it's automatically gonna download. If I didn't sign in, it would give me a download page here and it would obviously make me log in before I downloaded the file. So now that the download is complete, what we're gonna do is click the package file and we're gonna be automatically shown the Serato DJ Pro installer. We're gonna go through the steps. Again, we're gonna read this end user license agreement. We're gonna click through the installer and we're gonna install Serato DJ Pro onto our laptop. So now that we've installed Serato DJ Pro, we don't have to go back and restart your computer. We can jump into the software right away. So now if we look at the computer, what I'm gonna do is launch Serato DJ Pro. So when we open the software, it's gonna say, hey, try Serato DJ Pro. You get a 14 day free trial, click here now. Well, the benefit here to owning a DJ202, if you've purchased it in the US, is you get, again, this guy here, which is the Roland DJ202 voucher. Now again, underneath my fingers are the actual code numbers. They do start with SDJ. So the process of us taking that code is gonna require us to look in our computer, click My Serato, and you're gonna click this Enter Voucher Code button here. We're gonna enter the voucher code. Again, it's gonna be SDJ slash something, 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 something. Now, I've already done this, so because I've already activated it, let's assume I've input the voucher code, then this activate green button will show up in the Serato DJ Pro tab. So I'm gonna hit activate. But while I'm here, because I have all of these other plugins as well, I'm gonna click activate now. Now, of course, you're going to have to log in. You'll need internet access in order to do this, so just take note of that. So now that we've activated Serato DJ Pro, if you look on the software, you now have these two jog wheels that show up. And what these two jog wheels signify, if you look on the controller, is that you have a left deck, which is going to be deck one, and a right deck, which is going to be deck two. So those numbers correspond here if we look back in our software and you see the numbers one on the far left in the upper left corner, and then the two in the upper right corner. If your screen doesn't look exactly like mine, it may be because you haven't selected the same waveform view as me. Now what does that mean? Is that if you go back to this upper left hand corner, you have this drop down menu and it'll say things like vertical, horizontal, extended stack or library. And as we click these different views for the waveforms to pop up, now what do I mean by a waveform? Let's just load in any song right now. The waveform is the actual sine waves of that song. So here's the vertical. This is more of a traditional Serato scratch live view. So if you've been using Serato for a long time, this view is gonna be comfortable for you. There's a horizontal view. My favorite is the extended horizontal because you see a, a bit more of the waveform. There's a stacked view where if you're coming from a digital audio workstation like Pro Tools or Ableton, maybe this is your preferred view of choice. Or there's a library view which just gives you the song, the artist, the key information, and the BPM if it's available. Now the library view might be really useful for you if you're starting out as a DJ because it's gonna train you on how to mix by ear. Now, you don't have to mix that way, but it's highly recommended because as you're going from setup to setup, let's say you're going from a Roland DJ controller onto a CDJ type of setup, you don't need to rely on the software, you don't need to rely on that specific piece of gear because you're gonna be able to learn how to mix on any piece of equipment that's put in front of you. So I highly recommend that you go, if you're just starting out, go into the library view and learn how to beat match by ear. So we're gonna go back into the software now. I'm gonna go back to the extended view since this is my typical setup. And as we load a song, you're gonna notice that you have this eight button configuration here. 
These are what are called our hot cues, and we're going to learn about that more in a future video. We've got our loop points. I've activated something called beat jump, which we'll talk about in a future video as well, which allows you to fast forward through certain beats or bars. You can fast forward, jump forward or back. You'll see the tempo information. You'll see at what range you're at, because you can be at plus eight, plus or minus 16, or plus or minus 50. And then in this section here is what's called the crate section. And if you don't know why it's called a crate, well, back in the day as a turntable DJ, what you would have to do is take a milk crate and fill that milk crate with vinyl records. Now, taking an hour's worth of vinyl to a gig and taking record by record to that gig is really, really painstakingly heavy because in order to do a three, four hour set, you would need multiple crates of records, sometimes five to eight crates of records. So if you're taking that from your car into the venue and you're truck loading that, that amount of music that you need for that gig, it's a lot. And this is where digital DJing and something like Serato and the Roland DJ 202 really helps you is because now you have access to thousands of gigabytes of music on your laptop right at your disposal. So again, you have this, what we call the crate view. And inside of the crate view, you have two different crates that you can create. You have a brown crate, which is kind of like a, think of it like a file folder. Or what I like to do is uh, create crates by events. Or you have this blue crate, which is called a smart crate. And a smart crate, if you've ever used something like Microsoft Outlook to where you're able to create filters for your emails, it kind of works in the same way. So what you're doing are creating these rules. And so you would hit add rule. And let's say you have an artist and you want all of those songs from that artist to show up in this smart crate. You can say contains or doesn't contain, however you want to do it, you can do it by genre, whatever. But once you click save, now you're going to see all those songs with that particular artist that you typed in, and it's going to automatically give you all of those songs. And let's say you create a smart crate, but you want to change the parameters. Well, you can do that as well. So if you click a smart crate, you'll see this edit button pop up. And what you can do in the edit button is either delete the rule by pressing the X button, or you can add an additional rule. And again, you can do it by BPM, you can do it by artist, you can do it by genre, whatever, what have you. If you want to delete a crate, you hold command and delete. So I'm going to get rid of my smart crate. And now we're going to have just this brown crate called crate one. I'm going to rename this crate to DJ202 video. So now that I have a blank DJ202 video crate, I'm gonna pretend that this crate here is my iTunes crate. And what I can do is click and drag any number of songs into this new crate that I've just created. Or what I can do is select multiple songs by holding shift and pressing the down arrow, highlighting however, song, however many songs I want, then I can click and drag these into that new crate that I've just created. So now in the software, we're going to click the DJ202 video crate. And these are going to be all the songs that we're looking for. If there are particular songs in this, what we call the library view, if we're wanting to delete songs, we're going to hold command or control if we're on Windows. And then we're going to hit the delete key to delete files out of this new crate that I've just created. So now that we know the basics of how to get around inside of Serato, we're gonna to start to get into the hardware and get into the details of what each part of the hardware does. But before we do, I'm gonna highly recommend that you go ahead onto roland.com slash backstage, and that's gonna be at the link below. And what I'm gonna recommend you do is to register your product. And what you get with product registration are two bonus items. You get a three month subscription to what's called BPM Supreme, and what that's gonna allow you to do is get access to what we call a digital record pool. And what that is, it's basically a website that has all the latest hits, and ha it even has classics. And what you can do is download and build your library if you're a new DJ, or reinforce your library if you're a DJ that might not have done this for a while.
Now you can do that, or what will happen is you'll get a link to what's called Roland DJ Cloud Academy. And that's a live interactive course taught by a Roland product specialist that's going to teach you a bit more of the ins and outs than what we're going to be talking about in this video series. So in the next video again, we're going to be talking about how to get around on the hardware. I'll see you then.